good morning or good afternoon, whatever the case may be. I'm Jim DeVille, contributing editor to Ukulele Magazine. Live from the clubhouse here today, the Ukulele Kids Club Clubhouse for some tunes, play some tunes together, and to raise some money also for the Ukulele Kids Club because they're doing fabulous work. They're a nonprofit and delivering ukuleles to hospitalized children all over the world, over 200 hospitals. That's a good thing. This is a good thing to pass around and make people happy, and hopefully we'll uh, have some fun here today and play some tunes together. We'll get started in just a minute. In the, what issue is this? I think it's the uh, winter issue of Ukulele Magazine that I'm holding here. I wrote an article uh, for the Ukulele Kids Club called An Instrument of Healing. And you can read this article and read find out all about the Ukulele Kids Club in the article. Uh, if you just go to ukulelemag.com and type in Ukulele Kids Club or my name into the search engine, and you can read that article about the Ukulele Kids Club. So good morning, everyone. It's uh, 1130 Mountain Time here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. That's where I am. It's going to be a hot, hot day here in Albuquerque. Oh, I, I'm sorry, Martin. I almost forgot to introduce my sidekick for this today. Martin. Say hello, Martin. Martin, can you believe this? You wouldn't believe it by looking at Martin, but Martin is 90 years old. Can you believe that? How do I know that Martin is 90 years old? Well, in 1932, C.F. Martin Company in Nazareth, Pennsylvania, they built Martin. And in 1932, that was the last year, you can see on the back of the headstock, there's a stamp, a C.F. Martin stamp. And in 1932, they stopped stamping the back of the headstock and, and went to just the sticker on the front. So Martin is at least 90 years old, 1932, and uh, but he still sounds good. You know, it was a morning just like this uh, years ago when I was sitting out on my patio and I had my ukulele with me. I don't think it, I had Martin yet. I think it was a, a different ukulele. But I was sitting there and it was just such a beautiful morning and a hummingbird came right up to my face. And I thought, oh, that's a sign that I should write a song. And so I wrote this song and you can play it along with me. It's just a two chord little song. Uh, you can play it in C, G7, C, and it's called Strumalum. Two chords, that one, you can hear it, that one back home. <clears throat> I think you'll like the chorus. So grab your ukes, tune up, and uh, help support the Ukulele Kids Club today and have some fun at the same time. One, two, three. Sitting in the morning sun, strum alum, strum alum. All I do is sit and strum, strum alum a doodle doddle day. Now how often do you get to say strum alum a doodle doddle day? Strum, strum, strum alum, strum alum a doodle doodle day. Everybody, at first I thought I'd only hum. Strum, strum, strum alum, strum alum a doodle doodle day. Well, a hummingbird heard my song. Strum alum. Thought that he would hum along, strum along a doodle dog day. Strum, strum, strum along, strum along a doodle dog day. Now, some folks may call me a bum. Strum along, strum along, cause all I do is sit and strum, strum along a doodle dog day. Strum, strum, strum along. Strum a lum a doodle all day. One more on the chorus. Everybody goes. Strum, strum, strum a lum. Strum a lum a 
doodle doddle day and you spin. <clears throat> the spin is probably the most important aspect of ukulele playing, as I've said for many years, but you have to be very careful. There's a safety feature. Uh, there's a safety feature just like that. You have to have the safety feature so you can't. Martin gets nervous when I spin him, so I have to make sure that I'm holding, holding onto his neck really, really good. Again, I'm Jim DeVille, contributing editor for Ukulele Magazine here, live from the clubhouse today for the Ukulele Kids Club, which we're raising money to buy ukuleles for hospitalized kids all over the world. It's a good cause, and I hope you'll donate. There's a donate button somewhere around here. Let's switch gears. Martin's old. He can only do a tune. Then he has to rest, and then you can do a tune. And... So here is an odd-looking ukulele, isn't it? This is a big ukulele, much bigger than Martin. Martin is a little soprano ukulele. And this is a tenor ukulele. So it's got a longer scale length, longer neck. And this has kind of an odd body, doesn't it? An odd body shape. It's based on a Stradivarius guitar body. Did you know Stradivarius not only made uh, violins, but also guitars? And uh, my friend Joel Eckhouse from Ernest Instruments in South Portland, Maine, made this based on the Stradivarius guitar body. It's uh, sort of Renaissance looking, isn't it? It's called a Stradilele. Here's a tune I like to play. I like to play this almost every day because it's so beautiful. <clears throat> it's a, uh, you can learn it too. It's from John King's book, uh, famous solos and duets for ukulele. And it's called the Spanish Fandango. Hold on just a sec. Just change these strings which you're not supposed to do uh, right before things, but uh, it's that one. There we go. Little bit of the Spanish Fandango for you here live from the clubhouse. I'm Jim DeVille, contributing editor to Ukulele Magazine. Hey, let's uh, grab Martin. He's had a chance to rest. One thing I like about playing the ukulele is, well, you can just grab it at a moment's notice and document a period in your life with a song. You could actually write a song and take a couple of chords. This one has three chords. And I was sitting in my cottage years ago on the Oregon coast, and I looked out my window, and there was my landlady, Mrs. Tollefson, taking out her garbage. Can you believe that? And I said to myself, now there is uh, fodder for a song. So I'm sitting there thinking, Mrs. Thompson taking out her garbage. Yeah, okay. And a 
couple of chords later, C, F, C, G7, you've got a song that documents Mrs. Tollefson taking out her garbage that day. And you can sing along with the chorus. It's pretty easy. One. Mrs. Tollefson is taking out her garbage. She's stinking up the whole entire place. Yeah, Mrs. Tollefson is taking out her garbage. And she's got a nasty look upon her face. Well, a trail of coffee grinds, tag behind her, as she steps on eggshells crushed beneath her feet. Her paper bag is pardoning her refuse, and the hungry crows are ready for a treat. Chorus, Mrs. Tollefson is taking out her garbage. She's stinking up the whole entire place. A Mrs. Tollefson is taking out her garbage. She's got a nasty look upon her face. You know, the odds are five to one that she won't make it. To the garbage can that waits just down the street. The bottom of the bag is giving way now and it looks as though the culprit was some beets you know how beets beets will do that you know they get all mrs tollison is taking out her garbage she's stinking up the whole entire place mrs tollison's taking out her garbage and she's got a nasty look upon her face. Here's the sad conclusion to this tale of woe. She kneels beside the worst thing that could happen. A chicken carcass stares up in disbelief. Tears begin to cascade from her eyes now. And she vows to use a plastic bag next week. Cause Mrs. Tollison is taking out her garbage. She's stinking up the whole entire place. Mrs. Tollison is taking out her garbage. And she's got a nasty look upon her Destined to be a classic. Gonna grab the old Stradalalia again. <clears throat> Years ago, I lived on a, a big piece of property. I rented a, a, an old barn, a, a converted barn that you could live in out to east of Portland, Oregon. And we had 15 acres and we had all these sunflowers and raspberries. It was a, really a nice place to live especially in the spring and summer. And, and I believe it was uh, probably by the fall by this time since uh, we had a lot of sunflowers. And you would see the all these sunflower heads just waving in the breeze. It was just a beautiful sight. And prompted me to write a tune called The Waltz of the Sunflowers. And as we know, waltz is in three-quarter time, which is one, two, three, one, two, three, so people can dance. So here's the waltz of the sunflowers.
There it is, the Waltz of the Sunflowers. I'm Jim DeVille, contributing editor for Ukulele Magazine, here on behalf of the Ukulele Kids Club, and we're trying to raise some money too today, live from the clubhouse. So you can just uh, click on the donate button and we can uh, raise some money today to buy some ukuleles that uh, UKC can donate to uh, hospitalized kids worldwide. And it's a, it's a non-profit, so your contribution is tax deductible today. They're doing great work, so I hope you'll join us in supporting the Ukulele Kids Club. Let's see. Uh, let's see what are we going to do next. We're going we're gonna to do a little uh, Ernest Kai tune. Now, who was Ernest Kai? He was a uh, very well-known Hawaiian uh, composer of ukulele music uh, of the turn of the last century ago, which was like the 1890s, 1900, Ernest Kai. And the reason I like his uh, stuff is because it's very melodic and a lot of it's in the key of F, which I, I really like the key of F. And this one is called the Banjo Shotzi. I like it because in the key of F, you can walk up to the uh, first note of the key like that. So that's the Banjo Shotzi, Ernest Kai, Hawaiian composer. You can find that tune, the tab for that tune, also in the, the great John King book, uh, Famous Duets and Solos for Ukulele. Uh, let's see, Martin, do you want to play on this next one? No, we'll, we'll stick with this. Martin's still tired. <laughs> This is a funny story behind this tune. I wrote this song about my kitty cat, Fiddlesticks. Fiddlesticks was, she's no longer with us, but uh, she was a great, great kitty. We had her for 16 years. And she used to like to sneak out at night. And uh, one night I hid behind the scratching post and watched her. And uh, yep, I, I found out where she went and uh, and then I wrote a song about it. And it's funny, I put the song up on YouTube and you know, you basically forget about it. And later I got a, I got a small royalty check and I was like, what is this? And I realized that people love to make cat videos and all these people had used my song, Feline Fur Coat Ball for these cat videos. And I, and I got, I think it was like $4.89 off of this tune. Feline fur coat ball. It's in the key of B flat. Kitty cat, kitty cat, where you don't strut me in a coat like that? I'm strutting down. Feline fur coat ball. Every perfect kitty there has their tail stuck in the air. Feline fur coat ball. Love to swing, said, when the U 
ukulele rings and says, Bebop, he said, man alive, I said, hokey smokes, he's path can drive. Kitty cat, kitty cat, where you go to me in the coat like that, I'm struggling down. Feline fur coat ball. coat ball. That's a good one, huh? I love cats. Don't you? Cats are great. Well, this is coming from a classical era, this Stradolele. So let's play a little classical piece. piece called Opus 60 number one uh, by Fernando Soar. It's actually a, a, a guitar study from way back when. I'm Jim DeVille, contributing editor to Ukulele Magazine and to hear on behalf of Ukulele Kids Club, live from the clubhouse, reporting today from Albuquerque, New Mexico, largest city in the state. Hope you're having a good weekend so far. That string's giving me trouble today. Let's switch gears. Switch ukuleles, too. I think you'll be pretty impressed with this next one. You don't get to see ukuleles like this every day. Look at this beauty. This is a national resophonic ukulele. National invented the technology, the, the original national company, the Dopier Brothers in Los Angeles in the 20s, developed this technology for the what is known as the resophonic instrument or resonator um, ukuleles and guitars. They also made mandolins too. And what it's based on is Normally, like Martin and other wood-bodied instruments, they're based on tone woods, mahogany or koa. And the wood is what makes the sound of the ukulele. In this case, it's not the wood at all. This is a pretty uh, solid instrument. It's what's underneath this, what looks like a hubcap or a colander. Uh, that's, that's what makes a national sound the way it does. It's a spun aluminum cone. It looks like a little pie pan, like something like a pot pie might come in. And there's a bridge right here where the, 
a, it's called a biscuit bridge. It sits on top of this little pie pan. It looks like a little volcano. And the strings go over this bridge and it resonates the cone. So it's the cone that makes the sound. And the reason they developed this uh, technology, the Dopier brothers back in the 20s, was because the jazz age was happening and all these horns and, and jazz and the, the stringed instruments couldn't compete with the volume. They didn't have electric amplifiers yet. So this is the first world's first non-electrified amplified instrument. And you can hear that. You can hear that sound of that cone vibrating. So National went out of business eventually, I think in the 40s. But uh, a guy, Don Young, and his, he had another partner too. Um, Don actually worked with the Dopier, well, one of the Dopier brothers in the 70s and wanted to bring back that national line. So they did, and it's still in business today, the new national guitar uh, company. And uh, they made me this, uh, I don't know, about 15 years ago. So it's a real special one. Uh, they don't normally put this uh, National Shield logo in it uh, on uh, their wood bodies. And it's just, it's called the Tiger Maple is what it's made of. So you can see the tiger stripe on the neck. It's a real nice instrument. Great for blues tunes, of which I'm going to play one now. Gonna put some picks on for this. Two metal finger picks and a thumb pick. So this is really gonna, I might, might have to back off a little bit. This is gonna be loud. <laughs> this is a song that I wrote. I was living up in Astoria, Oregon. And uh, Oregon, the border with Oregon and Washington goes like this. The Columbia River separates Oregon and Washington. And all of a sudden it goes like that. and Right up there is a town called Astoria, one of the oldest outposts in the West. Lewis and Clark spent the winter of 1805 and 1806 in Astoria. It's right near the mouth of the Columbia River, one of the world's great rivers. And uh, the weather is really horrible up there, though. It, it, rain, it rains a lot, which is why I moved to Albuquerque. It doesn't, it doesn't rain a lot here. But anyway, I didn't realize uh, before I moved out there that Lewis and Clark had named a bunch of the places out by Astoria, Cape Disappointment, uh, Dismal Niche. Yeah, there's no happy valley out there. But anyway, I got a tune out of living out there for a year. <clears throat> I got this tune called the Lower Columbia River Blues. You can hear how loud that is with the picks on. That's got a bite to it, doesn't it? How many ukes do I have? I only have three here today. <clears throat> but I don't have that many. I have maybe six or seven. But they're all special. 
I'm just going to look over here at this chat real quick. Never thought I'd enjoy a song about taking out garbage. Well, see, there's fodder for songs everywhere. Let's see. Let's bring the Stradalele back in. And again, I'm Jim DeVille, contributing editor for Ukulele Magazine here, live from the clubhouse for Ukulele Kids Club, and uh, also trying to raise a little bit of money. You know, it all goes to a good cause to uh, buying ukuleles to distribute to hospitalized children uh, worldwide. And I appreciate the work that they do. And uh, also, all of us at Ukulele Magazine appreciate the work Ukulele Kids Club does. Here's a tune that's another waltz. This was written by a friend of mine, a Gideon Freudman. He's a cellist. And it's called the Manila Waltz. The Manila Waltz, it was written by cello bop fame Gideon Freudman, a friend of mine I used to play with in Portland, Oregon, part of a band called Caravan Go, uh, which you could find that recording if you uh, went to iTunes or CD Baby, the Caravan Go, C-A-V-A-R, C-A, you know, Caravan, and then Go, G-O-G-H, like Vincent Van Gogh. I'm Jim DeVille, contributing editor to Ukulele Magazine, and we're here 
for the Ukulele Kids Club today, live from the clubhouse, playing a few tunes, uh, singing along, a few sing-alongs, and let's uh, let's do this one uh, next. You know, I love nursery rhymes. Because there's a lot of a lot of uh, gold to be mined in nursery rhymes, and in the key of F, you can find "Twinkle Twinkle Little Star" pretty easy. Starts right there on that F note. Here's the scale. So you can find your twinkle right there in the key of F pretty easily. It just goes up to the fifth, then sixth note in the scale, and then just walks all the way back down to the first note in the scale. Well, I like twinkle so much that I thought that I'd add a couple of chords into it. It's only a three chord song. Uh, C and B flat, C, B flat, C, G7, C. But you can add in the, some minor chords because they're minor chords that hang around in the scale too. I'm going to add in an A minor and a G minor to these to this key of F. And we're going to play my version of uh, Twinkle, Twinkle Little Star in this little twinkle medley. I get kind of choked up when I think about Twinkle, Twinkle. The old uh, Twinkle medley, of course, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, and Dream a Little Dream of Me. Two of my favorites. I hope you enjoyed those. We're here for the Ukulele Kids Club today, and I hope you'll consider donating. It takes 50 bucks to buy one ukulele, and they've distributed close to 9,000 
in the last seven years. So uh, it'd be a good thing to help out today. It's a good way to uh, start out your weekend by doing something good, by donating to the Ukulele Kids Club and their mission to uh, provide instruments, ukuleles, to uh, hospitalized children. Let's see. Well, since we're up in the uh, clouds today, another uh, celestial tune. I don't know if you've ever been on the uh, Oregon coast in the summer. It's beautiful. And in August, I guess you can see the Perseid meteor shower anywhere, but in August, it's pretty predominant up on the Oregon coast. And I was up on the central Oregon coast. I lived up there for a long time. Uh, one August during the Perseid, and we went down to the beach. We had a beach fire, and the sky was so spectacular that we just stayed down there. Yeah, and funny because we not only were we getting the meteors, it was a full moon and Venus, you know how Venus in the summer sort of hangs around with the moon and as this meteor shower is going on, we have the full moon setting into the ocean with Venus right behind it. And it was, it was spectacular. I think we had to stay there till three o'clock in the morning to witness this event, but it was well worth it. And like I said earlier, uh, I like to capture moments in my life uh, with a song. And then anytime I play that song, it takes me back to that moment when I experienced it. So I can play this next tune, which is entitled uh, Venus Swooning. And it takes me right back to that August night watching the Perseid meteor shower on the Central Oregon coast. I hope it will take you there too. swooning and that was actually I did make a recording of that with my band in Portland Caravan Go 
and uh, with the haunting cello, it's really it's really something. I tell you what uh, I've been doing for the last twenty or so years is I've been teaching a ukulele, but uh, in a way that tries to get folks to not depend on the songbook as much as as you depend upon your ear, and so I could encourage all of you out there that are taking up the ukulele to start with simple songs, little, you know, one chord songs. You know, there are one chord songs. You put the lime in the coconut. You put the lime in the coconut. You mix them both together. You put the lime in the coconut. Mix them both up. You put the lime in the... Look at the melody is not moving. So it's staying right on that C chord. Then you maybe do a two chord song like we did earlier with the strum alum three chord and before you know it your ear is developing to where you can hear certain popular and important chord progressions and you know there are only a few uh, really really popular ones that you need to get your ears around and one of them is this That's a C, an E7, A7, G7, I mean D7, G7, C. One of the most popular chord progressions, the early part of the 20th century. And uh, this is ukulele players, one of their favorite tunes is a tune called Five Foot Two. Five foot two. You know, one of the most uh, easy ways to find melody is with a, a technique uh, called pinching. So if you've got your ukulele handy, you may want to uh, do this little pinch exercise with me, and then you'll be able to move through some chord progressions with this pinching exercise and really get, get a lot of melody notes. You'd be surprised. One technique can lead to a lot of different melody notes. We'll use that chord progression from five foot two, C, E7, A7, D7, G7, C. And if you don't know those chords yet, that's fine. You'll eventually know them. We all start in the same place right there. But if you have a ukulele handy, you might want to just, with the thumb and the middle finger, pinch the two outside strings, the one and the four together at the same time, holding a C chord. I don't, you don't have to pull it out like that, but you can stay right down there. And if you just went through those chords to five foot two, you can hear that just pinching through those chords, you get a lot of melody notes. Well, you can add even more to that by taking your index finger and picking the second string and then pinching. Index on the second string, pinch on the outside strings, holding a C chord. And then I'm going to go around with that technique and play the same chords to five foot two. Got a lot more melody notes just doing that. You can also alternate 
the index finger on the second string and the third string. So it'll sound like this. Index pinch, index pinch, index pinch second, index third pinch. So one technique and then play a chord progression and you can get a lot of melody notes just accidentally falling out of the chord. Here's another tune from that era, uh, 20s, 30s. It's a tune called Ain't She Sweet that lends itself to this technique also. sweet she sure is well it looks like uh, time has just flown by here only a few minutes left to today's live broadcast from the clubhouse again I'm Jim DeVille contributing editor to ukulele magazine this magazine right here and remember if you go to the ukulele magazine website and uh, search ukulele kids club or my name Jim DeVille uh, you'll see this uh, article that uh, I wrote for the winter edition of Ukulele uh, concerning Ukulele Kids Club. So I hope that uh, you enjoyed today's show and that you will uh, consider making a donation to the tax. Uh, uh, <laughs> let's see, tax exempt organization, Ukulele Kids Club, and to help them in their mission to uh, provide ukuleles to hospitalized children all over the world. And a big shout out also to all the music therapists and people working in the hospitals that uh, during this time. Um, and uh, I wanted to mention also my website if you want to find out more about me and uh, my uh, approach to teaching the ukulele. That's www.playukulele by ear.com and on my homepage there's a tab for 26 basic ukulele lessons so each of them are just about five minutes long so 26 basic ukulele lessons starting from this is a ukulele and right on up to uh, learning a song from sheet music muscle memory a whole myriad of topics of uh, just getting started on the ukulele, or even if you've been playing for a while, uh, there are probably some things you might have missed along the way. So play ukulele by ear.com and 26 basic ukulele lessons. I want to thank my good friend Martin. Good Martin, thanks for coming today. I'm going to play one more tune. Martin's too old for this one, though. I was visiting Columbia, California a few years back. Columbia is in the gold country, uh, east of Sacramento, up in the gold, kind of gold up there in them there hills. Well, at least there was back in 1854. And the little town of Columbia was a very popular because it was a gold, gold town in the gold country. Mark Twain used to hang out in Columbia, California. And what makes uh, Columbia unique now is that it's an actual town, a small town, but it's also a California state park. So vehicles are not allowed in the main part of town. It's just all these old buildings from the 1850s. And 
the only way to really get around, they have a stagecoach with a real live horses, two horses. And the stagecoach just runs around town all day. And so I was in the park getting ready for this workshop. And I kept hearing the stagecoach coming around. And I was like, I, I should write something that uh, resembles a stagecoach. And I came up with this. It's a triplet, but it's not a down triplet. A triplet is three. Triple it. Triple it. Well, that didn't sound like a, a galloping horse to me. It was going down. I, I wanted it to, to lilt. So I, I inverted the triplet and came up with the index finger, down with the index finger, and then, like a climber banjo technique, picking the top string. Does that sound like a galloping horse? So I put a few chords to it and came up with a tune entitled The Columbia Gallop. And I'll close with that today. Thank you so much for inviting me in. And uh, thanks to the Ukulele Kids Club for all their great work. Please uh, consider making a donation to continue their great work. Thank you everyone for tuning in. And here we'll, we'll, we'll catch the stagecoach out of town here at the Columbia Gallop. Gallop. Thanks again, everyone, uh, for tuning in today. I'm Jim DeVille, contributing editor to Ukulele Magazine, signing off from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Have a great day, everybody, and a great weekend.